Hello again and welcome back to Quarantine Conversations. I'm Tim Merrick with the CDGA and today we're joined by Director of Golf and Player Development at Northwestern University, Pat Goss. Pat, thanks for taking the time to, uh, to join us today. Of course, Tim, happy to, to be invited. Thank you and thank you to the CDGA for all they're doing and to keep us pushing forward with some good golf uh, content in the time when there isn't any golf. Absolutely. Um, you know, let's just start our discussion here today by kind of your background about, you know, at Northwestern University, uh, you've been connected with the program for close to 30 years now in some capacity. Um, so just kind of talk a little bit about your trajectory there and kind of what your current role entails. Sure, absolutely. So I was fortunate to play college golf at Northwestern under head coach Jeff Morey at the time. Jeff is now the director of golf at Conway Farms and a, a great mentor to me as both a coach and then professionally. But after I graduated, Jeff got some fun funding, which he hadn't had when I was there, and offered me the opportunity to do it. It was a part-time job back then. I did it in the, the winters, full-time. Then in the, the spring and summer months, I worked at Lakeshore Country Club to make some money and, and did it part-time. It was a great opportunity, a great time in my life. And when Jeff was given the opportunity to go be the director of golf at Conway Farms, they, they hired me as the head men's coach. So that started in, back in 1997. Well, it's, been a, it's been a long time, Tim, and here's funny to say it. So, and then in 2007, I was given the opportunity to become the director of golf and player development. And basically what that means is still most of my coaching, I would say 80 or 90% of my coaching is on the men's program, but I oversee both programs. We hired two women's coaches in 2008. Um, and we've just really run Northwestern golf under one umbrella administratively. We don't see too much differentiation between men's and women's only in the coaching really, but as far as our resources, our facilities, everything. We run it as one umbrella, Northwestern golf with two separate teams. We do a lot of stuff together. It's actually really fun. You know, one umbrella, both you're involved with both programs. Obviously we were talking a little bit before we got on this call, just about the season being cut short, unfortunately. Um, but up to that point, both teams were having a pretty good run of it. Both teams you know, recorded wins. So just talk about a little bit about the shortened season that uh, both, both programs had. Yeah, both teams were in good, good, solid footing. They'd had slightly different years. So, um, you know, first, our women's team is obviously coming off a unprecedented successful era here. They finished top 15 at seven consecutive NCAA championships. And, you know, hopefully all our Chicagoans here remember in 2017 when they won the stroke play at Rich Harvest Farms for the NCAA championship and then made it to the national championship match. Finishing runner-up was a great year. So they they've really had great success. but for about six straight years, they had successfully graduated the best program, the player in program history, who was better than the previous one. And so this year, they, they had taken a little bit of a rebuilding year, and, but they'd really done a great job. Emily and Beth are amazing coaches and had done a great job with a young and inexperienced team. And they'd shown some strong trajectory this spring. They'd already won this spring. They'd had two different individual winners, a freshman, Irene Kim, and a uh, sophomore Kelly Sim had already won tournaments, so they really were heading in the right direction and were going to make the NCAA tournament look like they were really improving through the spring. Our men's team had more of a solid year all year. We got off to a good start in the fall and played some good events. We played well this winter as well. We're ranked kind of in the mid-30s, depending on the poll, 32 to 37 or something like that. So a team that really had a chance to contend for a Big Ten championship and was going to go play in the NCAA tournament and looked like they had a good chance to advance to the finals. Yeah, you know, you mentioned um, Rich Harvest Barnes and kind of the, the men's golf team there at the end. Um, you know, the Big Ten men's golf championships were scheduled to be played at Rich Harvest Farms here locally. Um, unfortunately, that was also canceled due to the coronavirus pandemic. Um, so just talk a little bit about kind of what the excitement level was like from the program side of playing not only for a, a Big Ten championship, but also at a, at a local club like Rich Harvest. Oh, man, it was – our players couldn't have been more excited for it, Tim. You know, a lot of them were here when the women did so well at Rich Harvest, and they were making that 60-mile drive out to watch our women's team compete every day. Um, we, you know, as long until the rules didn't allow us to anymore, we had kind of once a year taken our team there. We had a couple kids playing the West junior so it's a place our players were familiar with and all loved and they were really relishing the opportunity and I'm sure for them the idea that get some Northwestern and Illinois fans and all the other Big Ten fans driving out there to watch us play and compete I think their fraternity brothers would have made the track out and all of that and uh, obviously we hate missing that Rich Harvest is a special place and Jerry Rich has been 
so incredibly generous to amateur golf on so many levels. So it's, it's disappointing for all of us not to get to play there. Absolutely. And again, you know, just piggybacking off of that, again, the, the NCAA announced last week that uh, all spring sport athletes will be, you know, granted another year of eligibility and another season to play, obviously with the season this year being cut short. Um, so just what are your thoughts on that as, as kind of a, the, from the development side, as well as just um, how it'll impact both programs at Northwestern? Overall, Tim, that, that's a great thing, you know, and we're excited for any seniors to have an opportunity to compete their spring season, and then these other players are going to get an additional year. And it's, again, it's, it's overall a very positive thing, but in the end, it's not without unintended consequences, and there is going to be some trickle-down effect from this, and coaches are going to have to manage it. It's not going to necessarily easy to do. You know, it's going to create some never had before, you know, for the first time ever next year, you're going to have teams playing scholarships depending on who your situation, if they're coming back or not. Uh, that's unique. And then this redshirt opportunity, you know, players are going to have a fifth year to play college golf, but each program has to individually decide if that makes the most sense for their program. And we're all going to have scholarship limits. It's going to be interesting. And recruiting raise it is for every player we redshirt and comes back another player we probably don't recruit so it's it's going to have some effects over the years absolutely and obviously um something that might attract recruits as you just spoke of you know recruiting um might attract recruits in the future is you know the updates to the bleacher golf center which has been featured in the um, latest edition of chicago district golfer magazine uh, so just take us a little bit through some of those updates and how, you know, those recruits as well as players already in the program will benefit from those. Yeah, Tim, of you know, I'm really at home with my family and really getting some bonus time with my daughters. And when people ask me what I miss, I think the number one thing I miss is going to that Gleacher Golf Center every day. That had been a project I'd been, you know, it's, it's been really interesting for me. I don't think this happens often where I was there the first time. It was my second season as head coach when we built the initial Gleacher Golf Center with Mr. Gleacher, and then 20 years later to have the same coach and the same do donor do it again is really cool and really fun. But I'd spent a lot of my life old Pat and Jim figuring out what we could go, trying to visualize what a facility could be, something I can better than I even ever visualized it. It's been amazing. And one of the coolest aspects for us was we moved our coach's offices there. So it's the first time in my coaching career that we have our offices where our players are and to have everybody there in the interaction and the vibe and the energy. I felt like I was at a world-class elite training facility for golf, almost like an Olympic facility. And I just loved it. So I'm, I'm missing going there every day and seeing the players and watching them train and work and being part of that process. But the facility really turned out great. And our short game area, we built a new simulator area with three simulators and video to train. We put in this pup view training put our coaches offices we built a beautiful gym for them and we have a full-time trainer there Scott Bartholme access to fitness and then we were able to do a very nice players lounge and really create a home player yeah absolutely and obviously uh you know you talked about one of those areas that's going on a lot there is that training and, and working on your game and that side of thing and you know a lot about that obviously having been with the program for so many years and working with a lot of players that have gone on to play in the professional ranks. So uh, just take us a little bit through some of the players that you've kind of had interactions with, maybe still have interactions with, and maybe some of the, the good stories that you can share with us from those players. Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, one thing, I'll just finish your question on the training area. We hired this Scott Bartholome, and I've always teased him. He's been here a couple of years now that when I introduce him to people, I'll say Scott's job is to make ball speeds go up. Then I'll jokingly say, if they don't go up, I'm probably going to fire them. But I'm actually kind of serious. But no, that's become such an integral part of the game. But yeah, professionally, I'm still doing some of my professional coaching, which I really enjoy. And that's been such a great opportunity for me over the years. It gives me access to the best players in the world and their coaches and their trainers and to really keep up on what the best players are doing and how they're doing it and who they're doing it with. So, um, you know, the, the biggest thing I'm doing is still coaching Luke Donald full time. and that's you know, something we've done since he was in college and, and after college, and he's at a different point in his career. So I'm learning a lot about that now. You know, 
he's in his early 40s now and in a different position and balancing having a family, but really has seen a strong resurgence in his game. I was disappointed for him the way the season, you know, has got temporarily put on hold because he had really been playing well and worked hard and was really seeing the fruits of his labors. And he's back home still working hard, getting better every day. And then it's it's been fun. I'm doing a lot of short game work since 2015. And that's been a great journey, you know, and you're familiar with Webb's results and how well he's played and the events he's won and the success he's had. And um, I've just never been around a player who had more conviction and belief in what they're doing and how they're doing it. And the short game work I've done with him was fun. And honestly, it probably took him about a year and a half before he put it into competition. But he kept wanting to do it and wanting to work hard. And it's very satisfying to see him at a point where he's doing it in the highest levels of competition and winning events well I always envisioned and recently started working with another player Victor Perez on the European tour player who's probably the top 35 or 40 player in the world talent he has a lot of opportunities to improve and traded about that and then there's David Lipsky on the European tour I've always worked with um, and he's doing a great job and playing really well and then uh, Dylan Wu, who graduated for us, who's had a great start to the Corn Ferry Tour and looks like he's headed to the PGA Tour at some point here. No, absolutely. A lot of those players that people around the area have come to know to kind of, whether it's Webb Simpson or, you know, Luke Donald locally, you know, having played here and, and uh, very familiar with the Chicago district and the landscape here. But um, you yourself, having been in the area for a while, also a CDGA member. Um, you know, what's kind of been your involvement with the CDGA and, and what are some of your favorite members? Uh, benefits uh, of your membership with the CDGA. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a long time. I grew up in Crystal Lake, and I grew up playing the CDGA Junior and being part of CDGA events that way. You know, I can remember I grew up at Crystal Woods Golf Club in Woodstock, Illinois, and back then, you know, we were writing in our handicap on pencil on the sheet, sending it in, and waiting for that two-week adjustment to come, and it was always just such a a way for me to measure my improvement and success. And I can always remember that being a big part of it and playing in events. And, you know, I've, I've been glad now and my daughter has a CDGA handicap and that's been fun. And um, yeah, I, I've loved all that the CDGA did. And I have so many good friends who are involved in New York and all the benefits you bring to golf in Chicago and what you do with the sunshine through golf foundation. Um, I, I've always loved the CDGA and been really proud to be part of it. And, you know, love seeing our Illinois, players have the opportunity to play and do host and also the events you bring to all the average players. So that's real. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, we appreciate, you know, not only your membership, but kind of the work you've done in the area with, with the golf and the landscape itself. So um, Pat, we appreciate you taking the time today out of, you know, a schedule that might not be as busy should we had we had been out on the golf course and been able to play, but um, enjoy the conversation and hopefully we can get out on the course soon and maybe you can teach me a couple of things to improve my game myself. We can get you going, Tim, I promise. And this is fun. I appreciate the invitation as uh, I've never had free time in April and May. That's normally our full go as a college coach. So this has been new and unique to do this. All right, Pat, we appreciate the time and take care.